Hey, welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. Um, this is question number four from the June 2019 and Mechanics M1 from the GCE paper. This question here is about momentum and impulse. Um, let's make this okay. All right. Now, it says two particles P and Q of masses M and 4M respectively are moving on a smooth horizontal plane when they collide directly immediately before the collision the particles are moving towards each other along the same straight line immediately after the collision the direction and motion of p is the same as the direction of motion of q the speed of p is 3u over 2 and the speed of q is u over 8 in the collision q exerts an impulse of magnitude 7 mu over 2 on p give a reason why the direction of motion of p is reversed by the collision so what i'm going to do is i'm going to make a diagram first and see what's show what's happening and then we will um, decide what to write there next okay so i'll do the diagram i think the diagram will be used for the other parts of the question as well so i'll, I'll draw a diagram we have a smooth plane we have um, these two objects i'll just draw them like this that's one of them let's say that's p i could draw p either way but um that's what normally happens um okay so that's p that's q all right so this is p label this p i'll label this q p has a mass of m and q has a mass of 4m they are moving towards each other before the collision okay after the collision so this is before so I'm, I'll, I'll put before over here this is before Put the details before and then i'll put the details after underneath okay so before they're moving to each, towards each other after uh, the collision the motion of p is the same as the direction of the motion of q they haven't mentioned which one has been reversed the speed of q is 3 u over 2 and the speed of the speed of p sorry is 3 u over 2 and the speed of q is u over 8. okay so the speed of p is greater than the speed of q so of course it must be that if the speed of p is greater then p must have been reversed because if it's traveling faster than q right it can't be going like behind q it can't be that q has been reversed because its speed is less than the speed of p okay so if their direction has been reversed then p must be going this way okay so that's a reason that's the reason i'm going to write so we can work out that this is going to go that way and this is also we're going to go that way because they have the same direction so we can mention something about that here we can mention let me just uh, make a bit of space here okay say so you can say as p has a greater speed than q it must be ahead of q must be ahead of it not behind it okay so you know if p is uh, its, its motion has been reversed okay and it was slower than q then that doesn't, wouldn't make sense because q would be faster than it. it's behind it okay it has to be in front of it okay uh, if this is faster this is going to be faster it's going to be slower that makes sense okay so the speed of p after the collision is um three u over two the speed of q after the collision is u over eight so we got that information and it says in the collision q exerts an impulse of magnitude 7 m u over 2 on p so, well actually the impulse is exerted on q and p and on p and q are both the same magnitude 7 m u over 2 for both of them because the magnitude of the impulse exerted of one on the other is both the same all right so now for part b of this question um, we are asked in part b to find in terms of u the speed of p immediately before the collision okay so the speed of p immediately before the collision let's call that u q all right now here we don't have the speed of uh, sorry speed of p immediately before the collision we call it up of course we don't have the speed of q before the collision 
So we can't use the conservation of momentum. I can't say the momentum before equals the momentum after, although it does, but there's two unknowns. I don't know also what the speed of Q was before the collision. So I can't use that method. What I have to use is the fact that I know the magnitude of the impulse which caused the change in motion. So that's what I'm going to use, which is a 7 mu over 2. So I'm going to use the formula I equals m times V minus U. This is the change in momentum. So if we consider P, consider the particle P, um, the mass of P is equal to m. The mass of P is equal to m. And the final velocity of P is equal to uh, 3u over 2. Now, I'm going to take this direction as positive. Okay, I'm going to take this direction as positive. Why? Because I feel like it. Normally, right is positive. It can be either, no problem. You can do, take whichever way you want as positive. I'm going to take this direction as positive. In that case, Vp is going to be 3u over 2, negative 3u over 2. Because it's going the opposite direction to what I've defined as positive. Okay, now, um, you, what is Up? Well, that's what we have to find. It's Up right now. Okay, so what we're going to do is, and what is the impulse? Well, the impulse that caused P to change its direction, to change its motion, has to be acting in, in this direction here. The impulse is acting in this direction that caused P to change its motion. So that's in the negative sense. So for P, the impulse will be a negative impulse that's acting on it. So negative 7 mu over 2. Okay, is that the value of the impulse it gave us? Yep, 7 mu over 2. All right, so with that information, we should be able to find what um, the final, what the initial velocity of P is. So we have negative 7 mu over 2 equals the mass of P, which is m, times V P, which is minus 3 over U, uh, 3 over U2, 3 U over 2, sorry, and minus UQ, UP, sorry, UP. That's what we have to find here. Now, the m's are going to cancel out because it's a common factor of both sides. So we're left with minus 7u over 2 equals minus 3u over 2 minus up. Okay, so now we can find what up is. Um, we're going to end up with, yeah, up is equal to minus 3u over 2 plus 7u over 2, okay, which gives you minus 4, or plus 4u over 2, which is 2u. So that is the initial speed of p. Okay, so that's the answer to part b of this question. The speed of p immediately before the collision, 2u. Okay, so that's 2u over there. Okay, now we're going to move on to part C of this question. Okay, so then it says, find in terms of u the speed of q immediately before the collision. Now, in this case, we have a choice. We could use the conservation of momentum, or we could use the impulse. I think using the impulse will be easier, and I'll do that first, but I'll also show you how to use the conservation of momentum. So in this case, the impulse, we know, we know I equals m v minus u. In this case, we're considering q. All right? So we know that the, the mass of q is equal to 4m. We know that the initial speed of q is what we're trying to find. We know the final speed of q is u over 8, negative u over 8, in that direction. And we know the impulse which caused the uh, motion of q to change, to slow down, is of course acting in the same direction as what we call positive. This is the impulse of this side caused it to slow down. So that's going to be 7 mu over 2 positive in this case, because we've taken the right as positive. Okay, so we have 7 mu over 2 is equal to m, which is 4m, the mass of q, times v, which is negative u over 8, minus our, what we're trying to find. Okay, so now... What's going to happen here? Again, the m's will cancel out. You're left with, um, if I multiply both sides by 2, I'm left with 7. u is equal to 8 times minus u over 8 minus u q. Um, I can multiply both sides by 8. So I have 7. u is equal to, that's going to be minus u. 
because the 8s cancel the, uh, out with each other, and you have 8 times minus u, which is minus 8uq. So we can find what, eight, uh, what uq is, add that to both sides, so you have 8uq is equal to, that's minus u minus 7u, which is minus 8u. So uq is equal to minus u. Divide both sides by 8. So that is the initial speed of q. It's in this direction, as we mentioned earlier, opposite to what we've called positive. That's why the answer came out as negative. But they're asking us for, to find the speed. The speed of q, of course, we don't mention its sign. We don't mention its direction. Even if they said find the velocity of q, we would say the velocity of q before the collision is going to be u units um, in the same direction that it moved after the collision. You don't say negative or positive, right or left. You mention in relation to how it was moving before or after the collision. So that's the speed of q. Don't write minus u. Okay, so that's the answer to part c. And that's, you know, fine. That's finished the question now. But supposing you wanted to use the conservation of linear momentum in order to find this, I'll show you how to do that as well. Um, I'll just do this on the other page. Okay, so if we were to use the total momentum, the momentum before and after the collision, we'll say the total, the total momentum before is the same as the total momentum after. Okay, so the total momentum before the collision would be the mass of p times its velocity. So it's going to be m times the velocity before the collision is in the positive direction, what we've taken as positive, plus um, the mass of q, which is 4m, times its velocity before the collision. That's what we have to find in this part of the question. So that's 4m times uq is equal to the total momentum after the collision. Now, we don't write minus uq here. Okay, we don't write minus uq. We just write uq. If it, if it ends up becoming negative, just like in the last question, we know which direction it's going to be. All right. Then we have um, m, the total momentum after. The, the, the momentum after is the momentum of p after the collision, which is m times, now that's negative, 3u over 2, okay, plus 4m times, and that again is negative, u over 8. Okay. So what we have to find from this is that part here. So let's just simplify this. In fact, all the m's will cancel out because m is common for everything. So we can divide everything by m. So this gives you 2u. This gives you plus 4uq is equal to, and you have minus 3u over 2, and you have um, 4 cancels with the 8, giving you 2. That's minus 2. That's minus 2, no, minus 2u. Okay, that's a u here. It looks like a 4. Almost confused me there. That's why you should be neat in your writing. Okay, that's a U. All right. So minus 4 cancels with... Uh, in fact, what did I do there? I did something wrong. That's not 2, is it? That 4 cancels with the 8, leaving you with um, U over 2. Okay, U over 2. Okay, that's right. All right, now, sorry about that. So here you have 2u plus 4uq is equal to, that's minus 4u over 2, okay, which is going to give you minus 2u. So you have 2u plus 4uq equals minus 2u, and then you can um, subtract 2u from both sides. So 4uq is equal to minus 4u. Divide both sides by 4, you get uq is equal to negative u. That's exactly what we got before. And as we mentioned, we can say, therefore, the speed of Q before is equal to U. We don't write the negative sign. Okay, so whether you use the conservation of linear momentum or you use impulse like we did in the first example, first method, both of them are perfectly correct. I think it's easier to use the impulse method, okay, if you've got a choice. Um, so that's fine. All right, so there's the answer to question number four. I hope that was clear. A few important concepts here in this type of question. Be very careful about the sign and, you know, your negative signs, positive signs, and think impulse. How does the impulse work? Or the impulse, what direction is it, be, is it going to be in? That's what students ask a lot. How do I know what direction the impulse is in this situation compared to the last situation? Well, the impulse is always 
um, acting in the direction which changed the motion of the thing. So if you think about the impulse that was acting on P, it must be acting in this, this direction because it changed its motion. It changed it from going this way to that way. If you think about the impulse acting on Q, well, what happened is the impulse, the Q slowed down. So the impulse must have acted in, in that direction to slow it down. Okay, so that's how you can work that out. So other questions you might want to see from this paper can be found in the playlist that will appear in this region here. Other questions from this topic of um, um, impulse and momentum, momentum and impulse can be found in the playlist over here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to look at the links in the description. You'll find lots of um, useful links there to take you to different AS, A2, IG material. Uh, thank you for watching and see you soon.